hello guys you're welcome again to another after effect tutorials today i want to show you how you can create this trendy fashion logo animation usually if you have a logo like this you can throw it into a template that you have render it out and it will look like every other logo animated out there so having the ability to animate all individual elements can put you ahead and make you have an edge against your competitors so before we dive into that i want to show you a screenshot from my analytics majority of you guys are watching this video and yet you are not subscribed to my youtube channel please do me well to subscribe to my youtube channel and help me get to 2k subscribers before the end of the third quarter so it is free to do it costs nothing even if at any point you don't like what i am doing here feel free to unsubscribe it is that easy and it is free to do so support me on this one do not forget to like the video subscribe to my youtube channel and turn on the notification bell then come back let's get started now back in adobe after effect create a new composition feel free to choose your own settings and then hit ok so now it is time to import the logo we are going to animate. Navigate to where you have saved your file, then drag and drop this into your project manager window. This pop-up right here, make sure you set it to composition, then hit OK. This is going to enable you import all individual layers from Illustrator. Then expand this folder that is created on your project manager window, highlight all these AI files, drag and drop it into your timeline and you have this. So we're going to pull this back to the bottom as the BG. By the way, I got this logo from freepick.com. They are amazing website. You can go there and check them out. So the first thing we are going to do right now is to make sure we have this BG fitted to our composition. So how would we do that? Usually you can just click on this uh, knob right here and stretch it across the uh, preview window and you have it fitted to your comp or you right click on the timeline, go to adjustment and adjust this to fit to comp. But if you look at it, the gradient right here is no longer round. So if this is a client job, this might not work at all. So what we're going to do now is to try to attempt to recreate the BG right here in Adobe After Effects. So undo this. Right click on your timeline, go to new, create a new solid layer. We're going to call this BG and then hit OK. So we're going to add a gradient ramp to this. Let's switch this panel to effects and control so that we can create the BG the way it is. So first of all, we're going to change this ramp shape to radial and swap this color. So we're going to pull this knob right to the middle right here and then pull in, then pull this out a bit. We're going to change the ramp scatter to about 200. Now we have a shade that looks like the original. So it is time to replace this black and white with the original color. So we're going to move the original BG right on top of this. Then we still have our BG selected. Double click on the color right here. Use the eyedropper tool to pick the color. Now, if you fit this to the preview window, and hide the original BG, you will see that we have successfully recreated the original background, but yet this is fitted to our comp without any deformation. So now let's arrange all the layers accordingly so that we can have the logo looking like it is in the original format. So I'm going to move this BG first below the newly created background. Then I'm going to move this up just to have what it is exactly on the logo. Then the next thing, I'm going to select each individual logo and move the anchor point to how I want it to move. Of course, you need to move the anchor point for the scissors right here because it needs to move at the middle right here. For the both arms, you're going to move the anchor point to the center where you have this white cycle. For the other object, you're going to want to move it below this cone right here. 
So now it is time to start animating the logo. Select the both scissors, then move to 2 seconds forward in time. Hit R on your keyboard to reveal the rotation properties. Set a keyframe for the rotation. Uh, move back to zero and rotate it like this. Select your keyframes. Hit F now on your keyboard to easy ease. Select both. Control Shift C on your keyboard to pre-compose. Make sure you move all attributes to the new composition. You can name this whatever you feel you can remember. Make sure you keep everything organized by renaming all your composition. Let's temporarily hide other layers so that we can see exactly what we are doing right here. This is what we have. Beautiful. The first thing we're going to do now is to make this layer a 3D layer then move your time indicator to two seconds forward in time hit p on your keyboard to reveal the position properties set a keyframe hold down shift and hit s on your keyboard to reveal the scale property set a keyframe also do the same for the rotation and set a keyframe for the y axis then move your time indicator back to zero we're going to change the rotation to 270 that is 0 by 270. And we're going to increase the scale a bit. So we'll also move the position on the y-axis downward a bit like this. Beautiful. Feel free to experiment on this. This is not written on stone. This is only but a guide to show you how you can custom animate any logo. Then right click on these keyframes. Go to keyframe assistant and then select easy ease. So we're going to open up the graph editor to edit the speed graph. Select the keyframe right here. Then we're going to pull this inward like this to about 100%. Then go back to your time. If you preview now, this is what we have. Beautiful. The animation right here is a little bit too slow. So I'm going to select the keyframes at the end here and pull it into about one second. I want this to happen a little bit faster. Exactly. This is what I want. So I'm going to fit this to the preview window again. Now it is time to slice this logo into four pieces. So we're going to need a guy so that we know where to slice we're going to slice the upper half into two and the lower half into two so what we're going to do now is to control r to reveal the ruler you can see the ruler right here then we're going to pull this ruler to the middle then we're going to also pull another one to this point and we're going to select another one to to this very particular point so what you're going to do now is to select the rectangle tool. You're going to pull this, change this scale to about um, 33%. So we're going to mask this out. This is going to make this to snap into position. Then you control D on your keyboard to duplicate another layer. Then you remove the mask by hitting M your keyboard and backspacing the mask. You have the full this and also mask the new one. So I'm going to simply just repeat the same thing for the remaining two slides. So we want to offset these layers five frames away from each other. So I'm going to select this last three and offset it by five frames and select the last and offset it. I'm going to also remove all these rulers so that I can have a clean preview. If you preview on this now, this is what you have. Beautiful. 
beautiful. So we're going to hide this object on top. So what we're going to do now is to search for the CC page turn effect. Let's switch this panel to FSR control so that we can make changes to the CC page turn effect. I will move my time indicator to 10, uh, 10 frames forward in time and then set a keyframe for the fold position and I'll move the position below. In order to see what the impact is on the position, we need to change the fold radius to 139. So now let's move the position. Nothing is happening. So we also need to change the control to top left corner. Now we have it uh, like this. It's having the impact we want. So pull it until you, don't, you no longer see it on your screen. Then you move your time indicator to 1 second 20 frames forward in time and move the position up. Beautiful. So what we're going to do now is to hit you on our keyboard to reveal the keyframes. If you preview now, this is what you have. Beautiful. We're going to hit P on our keyboard to reveal the position property. I'm going to come right about this point where it is almost sitting on its right position and set a keyframe for the position. Then I will move about 10 frames forward and move the position on the Y axis up like this. Then I'll also move 10 frames forward again. Then copy this first keyframe, Ctrl C on my keyboard and then Ctrl V to paste it at this point. I'm going to select this position keyframes. Right click on it, go to keyframe assistant and then easy ease. I will go into the speed graph and edit my speed graph like this. And if you preview now, this is what you have. Beautiful. So I'm going to fit this to the preview again. So now it is time to animate the text on the logo. So what we're going to do now is to unhide the text layer. But I want to do something different right here. Instead of me to animate the... There are several techniques, of course, you can apply to use to animate this vector layer. I'm going to instead type in all the text using the text tool. So in your own case, if you are working on a client logo, make sure you find out the font style they have used for the text on the logo. Otherwise, you may need to still animate the vector file layer if you don't know the font they have used. So always reach out to your client to find out that information. I'm going to pick the pen tool right here and click off here and type in the text I want. I'm going to hide uh, the text layer for the vector file right here and then select these two layers for the text and move it right below the position of the text right here. Then I will select the individual text layer and align them to the center. Now select the title text, expand its option, go to add and then add a position property. We're going to go to this little add option right here go to properties and add opacity we're going to set the opacity to zero and set the position on the y axis to a little bit below expand the range selector one we're going to go to about this point where the entire logo is complete and set a keyframe for the offset and change the value to 100. So we're going to move backward to about 20 frames and change the value of the offset to zero. We're going to go into the advanced option right here and we're going to change the base on words. If you want the characters alone, you can feel free to leave that, but I'm going to use the word option. Like you saw in the example in the beginning, I did for all of them. 
So if you preview now, this is what you're going to have. Beautiful. So hit you on your keyboard to reveal the keyframes. Select the keyframe, hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease. Now we're going to select the bottom text layer, which is the slogan. So we'll come to at the point where the animation is complete and set a keyframe for the position. And then come back right here to about this point and move the position upward on the Y axis. Then I will move to the last keyframe on the position, hold shift down, then T on my keyboard to reveal the opacity while still keeping the position keyframe visible. I will set a keyframe for the opacity and then come to the first keyframe and set the opacity value to zero. And if you preview now, this is what you have. So the next thing you can do to bring this up, but this could be okay if you feel you don't want to add more animation. So what I did was to add a motion graphics element using the stroke layer and the trim part option. I have taught you this several times on the channel. You can check this video on this logo animation right here to see how I did that. And then I have this. So after adding all the shape layer uh, motion graphic elements, this is what I have. You don't, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to spend your time to do this, all this motion graphic element, you can find a link in the description where you can download uh, the motion graphic element pack from Evanto and AE Juice. Those are affiliate links, so it might benefit the channel if you follow that link to buy any of their motion graphic pack but if you're on a budget this is pretty simple to do and i've explained multiple times on how to do this you can check some of my video in the description so but if you have any question on that you can leave a comment below and i will do you well to answer that the next thing i did right here was go into the text property right here and change the base on to font I, I remove it from words to character and then tweak, play around with the setting and I have this at any time. The advantage of this is at any time you can change the character. That is the title right here. So that is it guys. This is how you can animate a custom logo animation in Adobe After Effects. If you learned something new on this video, please hit the like button that will enable the algorithm to suggest this to more people if you have any question please feel free to ask me in the comment section and i'll reply to all questions as quick as i can if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe to my youtube channel you can support me in any way you can give me super thanks subscribe to my membership whatever way you want to support me with even if you share the video that is also a huge support and it is highly appreciated if you like the video leaving a comment is all a support so with whatever way you are able to support me i highly appreciate you so until i see you again on the next one my name is ssb otaru from motion digit studios